we last spoke, of course, there's been an explosion of, of web series and the whole digital landscape has changed. And that has been a really excellent way for me to kind of find my way back into screen because really up until the last couple of years, I would have said 75%, 80% of my work is in the theatre. Auckland Days, which um, Kerry Wakia and Kyle McNaughton uh, got off the ground with Mill and Baird. And, uh, you know, I really hadn't done any screen before and I took that with a grain of salt, that audition, but had a fabulous time. And anyway, lo and behold, I got that role and had a, probably one of the, you know, funniest screen experiences ever. And, and it felt so much more relaxing doing it on web. I don't know why that is. I think people, uh, there are less constraints around people. I think people could be more creative. It certainly felt like we had a freedom uh, to do what we wanted. And, uh, and then I did some stuff on High Road and uh, Awkward Love and uh, just, gosh, Smoko, lots of other little web series, which I've been, you know, had, had delightful experiences on. And then it kind of, mm, I sort of found my way back to television. So uh, I think, the, yeah, the, the, digital, the change in the digital landscape has been fantastic for me. Interestingly enough, it, it really stemmed from uh, an experience on set of Jubilee, the wonderful film that Michael Hurst directed. And it was his birthday and I went out there to, to celebrate that, to have lunch on set. And of course all the Māori actors got together to, to sing a waiata, do a mihi, and then turned to us to respond and we were lame. And I felt embarrassed and I thought this is insane. Um, I mean, I've always known I was going to learn Te Reo Māori, I'll just preface this by saying that. But I thought, you know, I live in this country, born in this country, and I have got to make a change. And so that's when I started, and it's been one of the best things I've ever done. But, but a challenge, nonetheless? Hell yeah! It's not easy. One night a week at, at, at night school uh, for four years, and then to some immersion stuff, and I basically haven't stopped really. And I just seek out opportunities to use the reo. But it's been, it's been amazing to be able to use it in my work. Not that I ever would have expected that. But you know, one great thing about it is, in all those times I was terrified, the one thing I did have was my ability to stand on a stage and perform. And of course the performing arts is intrinsic to um, te ao Māori. And uh, so that was, a, that was kind of like my in. You know, it's a good road to the real. Again, another role for a woman of my age, quite rare. Uh, she seemed reasonably complex. I liked that she had a whole lot of secrets that her family didn't know. Uh, I, you know, I have nearly grown up children and, and the same thing. So it seemed like a really, really interesting proposition. Well, I think one of the challenges for Dirty Laundry with me, and I have to take my hat off to production because I don't know how they made it work. You know, I was a, mo a, a nightmare to work around because I was doing a play at the same time. And I was also doing little tours of that play. So it meant that, you know, that, and really in the pecking order of that film, I was sort of number, number three in the cars. So the other youngies had much more work than I did. Uh, but I would sort of come back to set and spend three days, you know, in my prison garb and shoot episodes for three episodes, uh, for um, scenes for three episodes. So, um, you know, not an ideal scenario for, for production, but um, that's how it was. What I mostly did prep around was money laundering so that I could understand it and how you would do it. So um, we talked to somebody about that. That was really interesting, actually, myself and, and Ty, who played my daughter, because we just needed to know how you possibly could do that so that I had a, had a plan. It's a buddy ghost movie, and this lo lo these lovely young people uh, approached me about it, and I thought, I can fit this in. This looks like fun. I like the script. Tom Sainsbury's involved, Hayden Wheel had done another film, uh, and uh, I looked at that, I thought he knows what he's doing and what he wants, and, and I have to say it was a bit of a squash, like I said, I'm only available on these days. But again, I wanted a challenge, I hadn't done a buddy ghost movie before, so that's why I did it. I'm sitting down on the, um, it's something like you know midnight or 1am, it's raining, it's about I don't know, four degrees. We're down in the slush in a paddock, a cow paddock in the mud. And there's Tammy, the camera woman, the DOP sitting on her bum with the camera there. And I'm sitting down on the ground and it's cold and muddy. And I sort of like, hey, this is the life, isn't it, Tammy? 
But, you know, look, I can laugh about that now. And um, they were such a hard-working young group of people, and I like supporting that kind of thing. I think I'm spoilt now for filmmaking. It was such a wonderful experience. So, well, firstly, it was um, helmed, written and directed by Dorota Schiffman. And she's had this idea in the pipeline for quite a long time, and I think it's a big thrill for all of us, and her in particular, to get it made at last. And also and about a 97% female crew uh, with the DOP of Maria Inez Manchego. And it really was a completely different experience in that, well, normally when you make a film, you work intensely for five, six, seven, whatever, how many weeks it takes, and you sort of fall out the other end, um, you know, like, what just happened? What do we make? With this, we shot for a week, and there was a week of rehearsals for the next stuff, and for the art director of that particular segment to prepare all of that prep stuff, and then we shot again, and another week to rehearse. So a completely different model. And although we had a few little changes in our, perhaps in our camera assist, everyone else was the, was the same crew, a consistent crew right from the beginning. We philosophically want to make the actor's life better, and whether that is by providing professional development opportunities, by providing community, by providing things that are re relevant to the actor. So we, you know, hold panel discussions on everything from, you know, sex and nudity on film and screen, on screen and stage, to um, making your own work, to working trans-Tasman, to working in America, all of those things that are useful for actors. And I think people have realised that, actors have realised that, you know, we're really stronger when we have one, one voice. And the things that are, you know, at the moment we are in discussions or being you know, a part of the film industry working group, so that's going to be interesting to see what comes out of that. And also the fact that we, in the last few years, have uh, worked with Sparta to create that Sparta equity contract for, for screen productions in New Zealand. All of those things have been really good gains for actors and I think we're, you know, we, we need to be in the room because we are, we, we are the largest creative guild in the country.